Hey everyone, Dr. Frankie here with a really interesting knife consult for you on a knife that is extremely elusive, a Coltrotec Zim. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <clears throat> what I want to do is preface my video by saying go over and watch Jim Skelton's video on the Coltrotec Swarn. This is going to be a video on a different knife from the same company. But Jim did an excellent job of describing the history and the background of the company of Coltrotec about the Sultan Muradov brothers and the way that they came up. So I really recommend going to watch that video. I don't want to regurgitate the same information because I don't know much about these makers. I haven't spoken to them before making this video. I got this knife in hand thanks to a good friend of mine and I just wanted to present it to you guys based on my uh, opinions and based on my experience with the knife. So definitely go and watch Jim's video on this Varn 2 before you watch this so you have a bit of a background. <clears throat> but what I will say is I'm going to start in a similar way to him and show you how impressive the packaging is on this knife. This knife came to me by way of my good buddy Mike. He goes by Bloom and Blade. <clears throat> he also sent over the Black Snow Customs Mini Sabotage as well as the Shirogorov Pero. So thank you so much for sending these high-end knives for me to review. <clears throat> so uh, without much further ado, let's go ahead and open the box here. You're going to see that it's magnetically sealed. And on this uh, nice velvet pad comes the knife. This is the Jim right here. The Zim. I hope I'm saying it right. And the reason that I pronounce it that way, if you take a look further into their packaging, this pad comes out. <clears throat> there is a certificate of authenticity right here <clears throat> that describes that this is the Jim. Uh, I believe that when they write it out on an Amer American website, it's spelled Z-H-I-M, but clearly they want us to pronounce it in this way. It comes with an M390 blade that has been uh, heat treated to 63 Rockwell with titanium, beryllium bronze, and micarta, and this was born at the end of November of 2018, so a relatively new knife as of the beginning of 2019 while I'm filming this. They put a little microfiber cloth, <clears throat> and this little piece right here, subtly hiding right there, is a tool for the pivot and the body screws, which you can see are proprietary tools. Uh, you put your, uh, I guess you put a, a hex bit in there and you can get some torque on it and use this as your tool. Kind of a neat uh, thing that they included a proprietary tool for their proprietary hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck all this back together, get this off of the screen, and uh, go ahead and show you guys the knife. So this is the Zim. This is not the Svarn 2. The uh, lineup of Cultrotech includes maybe four or five different knives. This one was appealing to my friend Mike because it's a more EDC friendly size. It's coming in around three and a half inches as opposed to the four inch Svarn. So why don't we go ahead and get some vital signs on this knife so I can back up those comments with actual facts. So again, uh, as I said before, it is a three and a half inch blade. You're right at four inches to the pivot, just a hair over eight inches in overall length. Your handle is coming in at 4.6 inches with an effective grip area somewhere in the four inch range. So you get a very nice blade to handle ratio. It's a, it's a full size three and a half inch blade, but you also get a full size handle. Really take a look at the, t at the knife as it sits on the table right now. You can see that the blade really is going to barely fit into that handle. That's a nice thing to see. I love to see an optimized blade to handle ratio. Let me bring out another couple of knives for a quick size comparison. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3. I'm sure you guys are familiar <clears throat> with a number of other three and a half inch bladed knives. Uh, and so you're familiar with that size. Uh, it is smaller than the three and a half inch Koenig Arius that has an oversized handle. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and bring out a three, I think this is a three, three and a half inch blade right here. This is a, uh, maybe a three and a quarter inch blade. The Jason Guthrie Scout going on right here just for a nice cameo appearance. And so you guys can see what's going on. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. The, uh, the, the company of Coltrotec is a Russian company. Uh, they make these high-end custom knives, and they kind of came out of nowhere. Honestly, ever since Jim's video, that was the first I had ever heard of them, and now they're just super, super popular. Uh, and 
what I will say is that they're ridiculously expensive. They're very expensive knives. This one is probably in probably around seventeen hundred dollars, something like that. And so, what exactly are you getting for that money? It's important for you to understand that the knives are essentially custom made by a very small group of people, maybe only three people, <clears throat> the Sultamuradov brothers and one other guy. And uh, and so it, they're not really production knives, even though they make a number of knives that are basically exactly the same. They probably made 20 or 30 of these exact same knives like this, but they're all handmade, hand processed and hand finished by those guys. So effectively you're getting a custom knife but there may be some others that look like it. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. Up front is that blade of M390. They use various different steels. This one proudly shows the Yan Hook heat treatment of the M390 up at 63 Rockwell that they mentioned in the certificate there. That is very reassuring. I love M390. It's an absolute great steel. Take a look at the way that they've ground this blade. <clears throat> super, super thin grind. Take a look at the lack of material down here at the plunge grind. Unbelievably thin grind right here. Uh, I didn't give you guys the uh, overall dimensions right here. The blade stock is coming in at 127 thousandths. So for it to be ground so thinly and to also have a thin stock, you're going to have an absolute beast of a performer here. I also didn't give you the overall weight. This thing is really lightweight, and I'll show you why. It's 4.07 ounces. It feels like it's two ounces. I don't really know how to explain that. It feels tremendously lighter than that. Back to the blade. This is done in a very beautiful uh, mirror stonewash type finish. One of my absolute favorite user finishes. It hides wear very well, but it also looks good all the time. There is a small fuller on the top of the blade, and uh, perhaps if you're very skilled, you can use it to open the knife, but I'm not able to do that. It's a bit too small. Uh, it does provide a nice visual accent to the knife right there. I appreciate that that line continues back onto the handle and swoops all the way to the tail of the knife, and so it's a nice aesthetic thing. These knives are designed and built in-house. These guys design these knives themselves. They produce all of the means to make them, and they make them themselves, and they are quite nice. <clears throat> Let's move back to the pivot here. You can see there is a massively oversized stop pin that just exudes quality right there. There is a proprietary hardware uh, on the pivot. As you saw, there is proprietary uh, screw uh, screwdriver for that. There is a beryllium bronze pivot collar going around the outside. The most amazing thing about this knife, and the thing that I am still struggling to believe, is that this runs on phosphor bronze washers. I thought that, they're, that this 100% ran on ball bearings. It feels like a loosely tuned ball bearing knife, but it is, it is indeed a perfectly tuned phosphor bronze washer. And you can see I'm jiggling the knife. There's absolutely no blade play and it, it flies open and drops shut as if it is on ball bearings. Truly an exceptional action. Now I have some knives that I really like here. I'm gonna just show you the uh, Edgar Cole Custom Knives Chimera. This is a knife that I recently purchased that's also on Foster Bronze Washers. Also excellently done. I honestly was blown away by this knife. But when I got this knife in hand, it, this is even another level beyond in terms of the, uh, the smoothness. This has perhaps the best washer action I've ever experienced on a knife, and it is absolutely amazing. It really, really is. Uh, I see where the quality and the precision is when you take a look at that. Moving back to the handles here, you're going to notice that this is a nice mix of micarta and titanium. Clearly, they've used some CNC skill here. You have these overlaid scales on top of the titanium frames. Not dissimilar to the Black Snow Customs Sabotage. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap that. I had it all wrapped up. Uh, I'll show you guys what I mean here. Take a look at Mike's Black Snow Custom Sabotage. Just going to bring that out. What you're going to notice is that some of the frame is poking through. It's a very artistic style to have these overlaid scales uh, shadow boxed over the uh, frame right there. That's a very neat thing. Uh, another artistic flair that's hard to catch if you're not looking at this thing very closely. Notice that the gaps are minuscule, almost non-existent. 
they are worked into the milling lines and so they follow those curvatures and they're quite beautiful. The internals of this knife are ex uh, very, very extensively milled. Even though it's a thin titanium frame, they've been extensively internally milled. One of the impressive parts is right here where the finger groove has been cut out in such a unique way. That's very nice. There is a steel lock bar insert present right there. Nice amount of lockup. Very solid. Uh, past the spine tap test. No disengagement with a couple of spine taps. Uh, there is not a flipper landing zone, but I do not notice any sort of discomfort from these three ridges that are going on right here. Clearly the number three is a recurring theme for these Coltro Tech guys. I do not know the significance of the number three, but I see three prongs. I see three jimps. I see three segments. I see three jimps. I see three standoffs. I'm not exactly sure what the significance of that is. I'm sure that it's obvious and staring me in the face and I just don't know it, but uh, I do see the recurring theme of three going on here. Moving back to the clip, this thing is a hybrid deep carry milled titanium clip and it is amazing. It has a perfect amount of spring to it. It has a nice ramp and it goes in and out of the pocket quite well and it provides for an absolute deep carry. All the way down to the butt of the knife is hidden down in the pocket. Let's take a look at the centering of this knife. When, uh, when companies go and they put these midline things on a knife, you really need to have this knife tuned up perfectly to be online, and it really, really is perfectly online with the center of the knife, Remind, uh, reminding you that this is all hand-tuned and hand-done. Let's take a look at the back of the knife and the way that the uh, pocket clip uh, or the uh, lanyard hole is uh, integrated into the back of the handle. The way that the pocket clip is hidden with hidden hardware. Very, very nice construction. A very thoughtful, uh, almost puzzle-like construction. You see almost no hardware. Just the nice screw right here and the nice screw right here. I get it. I don't think I understood why these knives were so expensive when I first got this in hand. I kind of said... Ah, uh, well, you know, here we go, just another flipper. But what this is not is just another flipper. This is a knife that is being produced to the absolute highest level of quality of any knife that I've ever seen. This makes, you know, this is Shirogorov custom division level of attention to detail. This is absolute precision, smoothness, and perfection. These guys are not going to let a bad knife creep out of their... Uh, lineup a creep out of their factory because each one is touched by only the three guys that operate this company. Uh, it is beautifully finished. It is an excellent tool. It is thinly ground with a beautiful blade stock in M390 that is specifically heat treated. Just an exceptional, exceptional piece. Would I pay $1,700 to own this knife? Probably not. And I say that only because $1,700 is so much money that you can get a number of custom knives. This knife doesn't scream to me that I must have it. But if you are a fan of Shirogorov knives, if you are a fan of highly precise, perfectly made knives, this is certainly something that you should take a look at. Whether or not you like this particular model, I can attest that all of these knives are similar. I've felt uh, the Cultro Tech knives at their table at the Blade Show 2018. And I can attest that all of their knives are of these of similar levels of quality and fit and finish. Unbelievable, unbelievable smoothness right there. I just, it really bewilders me. One of the things, if I could just have a negative on this knife, is that the detent is a little bit light. And with this smaller flipper tab, it's easy to sort of miss the flips. But once you get used to how it fires, it kind of comes out no problem. And it's not so light that it opens easily. Uh, shaking it didn't come out and so that's a thing I did just notice that it wiggles you can actually hear that it wiggles on the detent small things small things here and there that's not a deal breaker but it's just something some knives do that in any case guys this is an extremely extremely unique knife and I'm really thankful to have gotten it in hand I fully understand where the precision and where the cost comes from if these are being made by three guys and hand finished all over and all that kind of stuff I get it. Uh, can I recommend it? Sure, absolutely. This is a great knife. 
Should you buy it? That's completely up to you. If you love this knife, go out and buy it. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed. It is every single bit as good as you think it is. It is every single bit as good as the hype suggests that it is. That is all 100% true. It is that good. Uh, it's just very expensive. And so think about it. Uh, it is better than a Shirogorov production knife, uh, and it is probably equivalent to a custom division Shirogorov that costs about the same amount of money. So uh, would I buy this over a Shirogorov custom division? Probably, because this is closer to an actual custom knife. The Shirogorov knives are sort of made in secret and they don't really talk a whole lot about them. This we know is built by three dudes. Uh, and so perhaps if it came down to that, I would choose this over a Shiro custom division. Uh, especially when you get into the one, some of the ones that are a little bit fancier. Now, they make, uh, from what I understand, they have about three different tiers of their knives. They have a lower end, a mid end, with, which this one falls into in the sort of $1,000 to $2,000 range. And then they have full-on customs that are like $2,500 plus. Those come with like Mokume and wood and stuff. Those are crazy, crazy builds. But uh, I'm really happy to have gotten this knife in hand. I'm not sure if I'm providing you guys with a ton of new information about it, other than I can corroborate that all of the rumors are true about how nice these knives are. Uh, they truly are very special, uh, but it is really one of those matters where you really have to use your own judgment as to whether or not you need this in your collection. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop rambling, and I'm going to go ahead and finish there. Go ahead and click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Follow me on Instagram as Dr. Frunky. Follow Cultro Tech Knives on Instagram. They really don't have a website that you can go and learn about them. The only way to learn about their stuff is through their Instagram page, as far as I can tell. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Head over to my Patreon and check me out there. See if you guys can support me in any small way at www.patreon.com slash drfrunky. And as always, y'all, take care.